Whiskey. I don't know. So, Matt, that is a great answer. And have you got lots of... One brother. Stand up. Do people expect you to be... No boys were attracted to me now. Seven-year-old. Lady clown. There's boys. Do people expect no? You're not funny. You're funny. It's all women. Is it? Yeah. Are you a woman? Yes, I am. And women are funny. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. What? What? What is this? Well, I'm sorry. You've There's got not even a cushion. I'm very sorry about that. Can we get a pillow over here at least? You'll tell me when you're starting. We're starting now. I need to know. When it's good, it's the best thing. Is is no other feeling. I mean, no other feeling compares to being on stage and getting that laughter. I mean, I mean, you know, you know how it feels. It's just you can't. It's once you have a taste of it, it's it's it's, it's worse than a drug. I think it's the greatest high. It's so flattering. It, it isn't just you think it's fantastic that these people have done this. They've come out on their Friday or Saturday <laughs> night and they've chosen you as their entertainment. Doesn't it give you phenomenal power? To make people laugh? Well, I, I have not think that. Of that. <laughs> hmm. Are you a bit of a tart for a laugh? Oh, yeah, like a tart. Oh, yes, I could be dreadful. Yeah, are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a like, damn question. <laughs> well, it's like when you said, you know, this audience aren't going to go there. I know what they'll like. I, I, I know I've thought that and thought, I know what they like. I give them loads of that. Yes, and, then, yeah, yeah. and then you're dishing out four little gags in a row, something to do with your ass or whatever. Yeah. And, and then you think, actually, I've forgotten my character now. And yes. I've completely <laughs> dropped the ball, but I've been a bit of a whore for yes. laughing. And we've all had a laugh, so yeah. that's fine. <laughs> So, Dawn, yes, Gina. do you feel that you've achieved everything in your career that you wanted to do, that you set out to do? I never set out to do anything in particular. I think I went with the, rolled with the punches and just went along with whatever the opportunities were. I had a good old go at it. I am considering stopping it now. No! <laughs> what will you do? I'd like to do something useful. What do you mean you'd like to do something useful? Comedy is useful. You know how many people... No. Do you think that comedy is a proper job? I do, actually. I do think it's a proper job, and I think it's a really hard job. Um, I'm not sure the rest of the world does, though. No, I don't think it's a job. I mean, it's acting. Well, we know it's not really, is it? <laughs> I mean, I've done jobs, and I didn't like them. I always knew I didn't want a job. <laughs> that was the thing. <laughs> yeah. It's so horrible work. Like, I, well, I had this job in a petrol station and the manager would always sort of make you... make you ask people if they wanted to buy oil. People know if they want oil. So every time they come in, they'd, have, they'd stand over me while I went, do you want oil? Hey? <laughs> no. <laughs> because, you know, oil is not an impulse buy, is it? No. You don't think, I'll treat myself to a couple of gallons of two-stroke. <laughs> My sister-in-law said to me the other day, she's a teacher, so she said they'd had Ofsted. She said, oh, God, she said, you've no idea. I said, what? She said, to have someone watching your every move and then write about you. I said, hello? And she went, oh, yes. <laughs> she started to laugh. And I said, that our whole lives are like that, in a sense. Yeah, it's a lot harder than dramatic acting, isn't it? It's a lot harder to write. I mean, God, imagine writing a scene about, you know, a husband leaving a wife, dramatic. It'll take you ten minutes. Try and write it funny. You know, it's, oh, it's very hard to write. Yes, yeah, I do now. Yeah, I mean, I respect what I've done a bit more now. I'm not so dismissive and um, self-depreciating in that sort of classic British way. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's the best job. I wish I could do it more, frankly. I, I'm not touting for work there. I, I actually abandoned it in the hope of becoming a, a proper actress. And I did succeed, I think, in making people forget my origins in comedy. I think it's brilliant. It's, it's a holy talent, and I mean, lucky the ones that have it. I do think it's a proper job, and I went through a long time of feeling very guilty, you know. Oh, God, you know what I mean? All I'm doing is putting on silly hats and strapping my bosoms down. And... But people need to be entertained, and people need to have fun, and, you know, and um, I think our job is, 
it's just as important, you know. It makes people happy, it gives some, them, some, them something to look forward to when they switch on the TV and they like you and they want to see what you're doing. And I wish I had your optimism about it, you see. Do you feel like you've done everything and there's nothing more that you can achieve? No, I don't, don't feel that, quite the opposite to that. I feel like there's loads more to do. But I don't know, part of me thinks it's... Because, partly because it's very, such good fun to do this job. It feels like not a proper job to me. Well, that's how I used to feel, but it is, I promise you. It's an essential job. It's Why? an essential job. Because, A, it mocks things, and we need mockery. God knows we need mockery. It, it, it is such a tonic when you're sad. It is such a tonic. There is nothing better. Well, no. <laughs> yes! At last, somebody says it! No, it's not. It's not. But I think that's probably why we do it. Because it isn't, you know. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I think I would probably be in nursing or something. Do you think that you get away with it? Is that what you think all the time? Every day. I think someday somebody's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy police The will comedy come police you. are going to come and take me away, you know. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, uh... No, it's not. Hello. Once a week for the next 14 years, I'm going to elaborate on well-known phrases or sayings in common parlance. Today's phrase is, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. This is... Oh! Ah! I think maybe you have to find the world amusing to begin with, so that your viewpoint is can, can make something that's ordinary into something that tickles other people's fancies. And do you think you've always had that talent to just look at things sideways a little bit? Well, I obviously have a very peculiar view of the world. People very... Their mouths often drop open as I speak. At, <laughs> because <laughs> I'm obviously not in the same sort of wavelength as they are. I mean, I always think it's not the, necessarily the funniest people that are comedians, is it? Because there's, we all have friends who are much, much funnier, and there's loads of people who are funny but they don't have that imbalance <laughs> that makes them want to do it. They're quite happy to be funny with their friends and have a proper job. I think my characters are funnier than me. I'm not, I'm not sure there's anything that, uh, of my personal life in it. So people always try and say, oh, your character's versions of you, or is that character the nearest to you? And I don't think any of them are. I always feel that with characters, I've got a mask. I'm, it's an acting job and I'm hiding behind something. Stand-up, I think, is... Well, if you talk to stand-ups, they say, well, it's, a perso it's still a persona, but it feels a lot more raw and a lot more personal. And I think probably one of the reasons there are fewer women stand-ups is that it's rough. You know, you have to have the hide of a rhinoceros. I'm kind of an oxymoron for the entertainment world, but I've somehow managed to look like I'm a total, like, drug addict, fuck up, sex fiend, <laughs> and still, like, remain completely healthy and get all my rest and my vitamins. I only developed uh, my personality as a comedian because when I took the stage, nobody would listen. Nobody took me seriously. Nobody could imagine that somebody like me would actually have anything that they would want to hear. So I had to be very assertive and very aggressive and to, to formulate this kind of persona that was so intimidating that people had to take notice. But as a person, I'm, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very low-key, quite shy. I sort of slightly find the person I am when I'm a stand-up comic a little bit disturbing to live with. Uh, and I know that sounds very wanky. It's not at all, But I'm That's... actually not a very nice person when I'm being a stand-up comic. Well, why is that? Because I'm a basket case, because I'm very, very mental. Uh, and I don't actually trust her as far as I can throw her. I found it very important about uh, ten years ago to be able to create enough work outside the stand-up persona because I thought if she goes completely mad I've got to have something to be able to fall back on. I'm disgusted that I invented this thing. I mean I I don't like what people think I invented. What do you think that was? Um, I think a loud brash American and if I meet a loud brash American I'm the first to like erase you know their number out of any telephone book. I never want to be in contact. Um, I don't know where it came from. I guess I did it. And I guess it worked, but it's never me, you know, and when I started doing those documentaries, I wasn't just that. <laughs>